Hello, today we will talk about the visitor. What is the visitor all about? The visitor adds behavior on aggregates of different objects. What does this mean? We as a client, we work on an aggregate of objects, which is a list of objects, for example. And here we have many figures of circles. What if we want to do something? If we want to apply a functionality on all these objects, of course, we have to iterate over each and every of them. In this case, let's imagine these are real circles. And if we stack them on each other, what is the total height? If we would implement this, the source could look like this. We have a height. And we go in a for each loop over each of the circles and we add up twice the radius of a circle to get the total height of all circles. Okay, so far so good. But what if we not only have circles, but also triangles, squares, and these are mixed up in our list. And as you can imagine, a triangle and a square don't have this radius function. We have to access other functions in order to calculate the total height. For example, a circle could look like this. We have our circle and we have the radius method, which returns the radius, just like we have used it before. In a triangle, this could look like this. A triangle has this get height method, which returns the height of the triangle. Perfectly. This is just what we need, but it's different to the circle. And furthermore, the square does not have a height, it just has a length. And we have to use this length property in this case. It's not even a method. How could we implement this? In such a way, we loop over all figures and then decide if our current figure is a circle, we access the radius. If our figure is a triangle, we access the get height method. And if it's a square, we use the length. Because in a square, the length is the same as the height. Okay, it works. But is this beautiful code? Mm, no. What if we have additional types? We have to add it here. What if not only we want to calculate the height, but also maybe the area, maybe the circumference uh, or other attributes? Of course, we could add this functionality to the objects themselves, but this would pollute our objects. Our objects will get filled up with functions which we just need for another purpose, which the object originally didn't even need it. The question is now, how can I apply different behavior based on the type of objects? And that's the idea of the visitor. We want to add behavior based on the object type in a whole list of objects. We as a client, we are working with some aggregate. This could mean a list, an array, a tree or set, whatever. The important thing is here. We want to apply some functionality to our elements. And for this, we have to implement this accept method. And this accept method just takes a visitor and applies it to itself. For example, we have a concrete implementation A and the implementation B. These are different object types. And implementation A implements the accept method like this by using the visit element A method and element B uses the visit element B method. And they both provide themselves as parameter. So it's double dispatch. We get an object and call the visit method and supply ourselves as the parameter to this visit method. Let's look at the visitor now. So the visitor interface itself has these two methods, visit element A with element A and visit element B with element B. In programming languages where you have an overloading mechanism, you could also implement it like this, in this example above. 
Here, the method name is the same, but the parameter type is different. And the compiler decides which actual method should be called. In the original depiction of the Gang of Four, they used just a different name for the different types. As you can see, the element B and element A decide for themselves which method they should call. But let's continue with the visitor now. What if you want to implement this visitor? Like here. A concrete visitor implementation needs to implement both elements, visit element A and visit element B. What does this mean? For example, this could be our height calculator. Element A could be the circle, element B could be the square, and so on. And we want to calculate the height. For this, we have to implement both methods for both object types. Another concrete visitor could also be implemented, and here it could be, for example, an increase area visitor, which does not just use the properties from the objects, but also changes it. It needs to have some access to the properties of the objects and maybe even to private properties, which could be a problem. But we will talk about this later on. Let me give you some source code examples. The client could look like this. First, we create a visitor. In this case, we create our height calculator. And then we go over our list of elements. And for each element, we call the accept method and supply our visitor to this method. How could the according element implementation then look like? For example, here. Our class circle implements i element. It has the accept method, which accepts the visitor. And we call the visit method and supply ourselves as a parameter. In this case, we use overloading. And in the visitor itself, we have the following three implementations. One visit for circle a visit for triangle and a visit for square. And each of those methods works differently. But as you can see, all return void. How do we get the actual height? In this case, we have to store the height in the visitor object itself and then have to supply some method to return the calculated value. This is not defined in the visitor itself, but of course, we could implement a mechanism which also returns something or a mechanism which let us access the result of the visitor. Let's talk about the properties of the visitor now. The context is we perform operations on element of an aggregate. This can also be different types. The problem is now, how can we re react to different types and how can we execute some additional behavior on these different types. We don't want to change the objects themselves. Maybe we cannot change them. But anyways, we want to add some behavior and we want to distinguish between the object types. The forces are that in our list, there can be different types or interfaces contained. We want to avoid polluting the classes with unrelated operations. We don't want to add a function for every additional purpose in the original objects. Maybe we cannot add these functions because we cannot change the objects. One important thing is here, we know the types. So the types are relatively stable. There are seldom new types. The solution is now to implement the functionality for each different object type in a visitor. We pack together related functions in a visitor and implement a different method for each different type of object. And then we have to implement means how to apply the visitor to every object. We have seen the double dispatch method with this accept and visit methods, but you can think of different ways also. So what are the consequences now? Adding new functionality is easy now. We don't have to change the original objects. We can just create a new visitor and apply it to all objects. Perfect. A visitor combines related functions. If we want to calculate the height, 
this is not a function which is distributed over all our objects anymore, but it's combined in one visitor. We can account for different object types, so the visitor automatically decides which method should be called. We can accumulate state, a visitor can remember state between calls. One liability is who traverses the aggregate and how, because we can have different types of aggregates, arrays, lists, sets, and so on. The visitor itself does not decide that. Should we use double dispatch or not? Should we use a direct call to the visitor and not supply ourselves as a double dispatch? One problem is here, adding new class types is very expensive. If we often have new classes and new types of classes, then we always have to change all our visitors. Adding functionality is easy. Adding new types is difficult, because then we have to change all the visitors. Furthermore, a visitor may need access to private members. This breaks encapsulation, and this is not possible. Of course, in C++ you could use the friend mechanism, but this is not available in every language. And making properties public is also not the most elegant solution. So this can be a conflict. Okay, that's the visitor. Think of the friendly technician traveling from house to house and repairing some stuff 